What is up fellow web developers, my name is Tyler Potts and it has been a long time since I made a video but in today's video we're going to be creating a temperature confer. So we're going to be creating this, what you see on screen now, let's say if we say it's 20 degrees, what is that in Fahrenheit? That is 68 and so forth down here you can also see it's 293.15 Kelvin and we can also change the other values too so let's say if we wanted to be check what 80 uh, degrees Fahrenheit was in uh, uh, Celsius then we can by just looking at here and it can you can see the conversion says a lot of decimal place here we could limit that but for now we're just going to leave that in that's fine uh, as you can see we can change this up and it will be very accurate so let's say 10 degree oh, 10 degrees Celsius. So let's just go to Google and say 10 Celsius to Fahrenheit. That is going to show that it is equal to 50. Um, and there is the formula down there. Now I've actually saved the formulas in this document. So you can see Celsius to Fahrenheit is this formula and so forth. You can see all here. So we'll be using these later on. For now, we're just going to put these aside. So let's get started. So the first thing we need is create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this the uh, converter. I'm then going to open this up in Visual Studio Code by dragging it onto Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, it's there. Yes, yes, we do want you to do that. Thank you. Um, now, let's create a new folder. We're going to have an index.html. We also need a main.js and a main.css. Now, there's a lot of files here. We're going to be using Emmet to quickly quick make this template here. Um, and then we're just going to say confer. We're then going to have a main, a header with a h1, which just says uh, converter. And then we're going to have a section called inputs. And then we're going to have three inputs with the class of inputs times three. Um, and as you can see there, they all are. We also need to add onto these just a name so we can, a name and an ID. Cool. So that is all the markup we need, except from we are missing the uh, rel relevance uh, or the uh, the link tag and the script tag to add in our JavaScript. Okay, guys. So I have an extension uh, installed called Live SAS or not Live SAS, but Live Surfer by Witwick Day. You can see it here. You'll need to install this if you want to start a surfer like I do, or you can just double click the index.html file in your file structure and it'll open up in the browser. Anyway. Um, so I'm just going to go command P, going to type this and go uh, open with live surfer. And this, as you can see, has opened it up for live surfer. Now, this doesn't look very pretty. So we're actually going to paste in some CSS here. Now, you guys might want to see the CSS, but it's very basic. I'm just going to save this. And there you go. You can see it's basically styled. It's a bit messed up here, but that's fine. We'll fix that in a second. So as you can see, we have just simple reset, um, some background color, header centered, H1, uh, inputs, and then input, and then input focus. Now the inputs seem not to be working because I accidentally named these inputs instead of input because they are singular inputs. This one is the plural input. So if we go back, there you go. So now we have it all here. We're going to add in a placeholder for these. Well, placeholder, oh, and another placeholder, which will be Kelvin. There you go. Now you can see that there. Um, also, I've realized I did these as text. I'm going to do these as numbers because we are just going to be working with numbers. It means we get that little nice little number box there, which we don't need, but just in case we want it. Um, there we go. So let's close the old one um, and let's open up our terminal. There we go. Just put in this view. I like it in this view. Um, cool. So let's go to our JavaScript. Now, the first thing we need to do is get reference to all three of our um, inputs here. So we're going to get individual uh, ones and then we're going to just quickly loop through them all as well. So I'm just going to say uh, Celsius input is equal to document dot get element by ID and the ID is obviously Celsius. I'm just going to double check that. Make sure I spell it right. Yep. Cool. And then we're going to say const Fahrenheit uh, input. Is equal to document dot by ID, and again I'm just gonna copy that so I don't make a spelling mistake. There we go, and we could just copy this last one and quickly change both. I'm gonna press Command D to grab both of the nearest ones. I'm just gonna say Kelvin, 
And there you go. So there you go. That is all three captured. Um, and hopefully they're all right. We can check that in a minute. We then want a uh, just oh yeah a const called inputs, and we're going to set this equal to uh, document dot get elements by class name, and we'll just go put input because we only have these inputs here. So let's go get all three inputs for us. We don't want to do a for loop, so we're going to say for let i equal to zero. I is less than uh, inputs. Oh, inputs dot length i plus plus so a simple for loop uh, and then we're just going to say let input equal document dot oh no sorry <laughs> inputs i perfect now down here we're just going to say input dot add event listener and it's going to be called input so any input we put in here we're going to have a function which passes through e and then we're going to say let value equal e dot target dot value so let's just quickly console log what this does so we're going to console log the value oh, wrong way and we're also going to do e dot target dot name as well plus there you go so we'll be able to see which ones we've changed so if we go back here and we go to Celsius and we type let's say 60 You'll see here it goes Celsius 6, 60. The reason for that is because we type 6 first and then 0. If we delete one, you can see it goes back 6. So any input we put in it is going to update, which is good because that means anytime we update this, it's going to update this. And same with this one. You can see this one updates, and so does this one. And that is perfect. That's how we're just going to quickly update each section. I keep accidentally pressing the wrong button. I really apologize for that. So... Also, I probably should zoom in because people will get mad at me and I apologize for I'm really zoomed out. There you go. That should be zoomed in enough. <laughs> so now inside our function, let's just remove the console log. We want to actually create a switch statement. And in the switch statement, we're going to take e.target.value. Nope, sorry, e.target.name. And then this value is actually going to be, the first one is going to be Celsius. Celsius, thank you. Uh, and then we're going to create a couple more. And we don't need a default, but you probably should have a default for some, but for now we don't need it. So we're going to do Fahrenheit, and then we're going to do Kelvin. Now this is just, if we just console.log in here, I'm just going to put C. Oh, excuse me, I want to copy you. Uh, F and K. Now if we go back, and we make a change here, you can see we get C, F, and K. Just basically mean, it just basically, we get the target's name, we check if it's equal to any of these, so which um, input we're entering on, and then we're passing it back, which is fine. And now, all we need to do is change each value of each one. So, if we're in Celsius, we want to change Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So we're going to say, Fahrenheit input dot value is equal to, and if we go back to our, or if we go here, you can see here we have the formula here, so I'm going to copy this one, Celsius to Fahrenheit, paste this in and change C for value. And that is how we get thingy. We also want to change this um, this to say uh, pass float, because this will convert this value into a float. Because sometimes I've had it where it's come through, even though it's coming from a number function, it's come through as a string and it's caused me some issues, just so you're aware. Uh, and then we're going to say Kelvin input dot value is equal to. Now I know this one off by heart, so I'm not actually going to do it. It's just I'm not going to copy the thing. It's two seven three point fifteen, and we just add this on. So if we go, oh, if we go and check that, you can see it's C plus two seven three dot fifteen, which is perfect. So now if we save this and we go back, we go to Celsius and we say twenty. You can see both these update, which is perfect, and they're accurate as well. And that's the main point. Uh, and if we go 28 degrees and let's say 50 degrees and 100 degrees, you can see they update uh, constantly, which is perfect. We can then do the same in here. So we can say Celsius input dot value is equal to, and let's get the value here. So it's this one. And we change F for value. And same with Kelvin. 
we just grab the formula in here, which is actually quite large this one, and quickly paste that, change this for value, and we could do the final one here, we could also do Celsius again. I'm just going to copy the formulas each time. I know these ones off by heart, but it's fine. We can quickly grab them, makes it quicker. Um, and then we're just going to do Fahrenheit dot value is equal to, I keep going the wrong way, apologize. Uh, and again, K should be value, hit save, go over to this, and now let's change Fahrenheit. Let's say we want it to be 68. You can see that is 20. And let's say here we want this to this, if we put this at 273.15, you can see we get dead zero and 32, which is exactly uh, the right variables. And that is it. That's all you need to do for this thing. So if it's 40 degrees, it's 104 Fahrenheit and 313.15 uh, Kelvin. So you can see here, if we just keep changing values, it will change and update. We can change Fahrenheit too, and Kelvin. There you go. So that works as expected and perfectly for me. Hopefully it works perfectly for you. If you have any problems, don't forget to drop in the comment section below. If you have any questions or you want to see something else more advanced in the future, then please just let me know in the comments below. Uh, now, just at the end of this video, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has still stuck around. Even I swapped to game dev and then back. My game dev stuff is now moving over to my Muddy Wolf channel and my web dev stuff is coming back to the main channel and we're sticking with it now forever onwards i'm not going to change again and i apologize for changing because a lot of people got really mad for me but yes thank you guys for watching this video if you enjoyed it don't forget forget to smash that like button hit the subscribe button share with your friends and comment down below guys thank you very much and peace